Accessing USS Shitshow crew member log files. Please select required crew member. Ensign Court selected, commencing playback. Ensign's log, stardate 26239.4. The captain's assigned me a very special mission. Find out where the moisture goes from holodeck simulations. I did ask engineering, but they told me to piss off. Guess I'm on my own with this one. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> I think I caught the burp. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the la 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 bit, but I might have caught the burp. La 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 la. Figaro, 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 la, figaro, la. I don't even know the words I'm just making up now. Robin Williams does a really good one on that, doesn't he? I know, he? he does. It's really fun to do. Mm. <laughs> hey, Figaro! Son qua, Figaro qua, Figaro la, Figaro qua, Figaro la, Figaro su, Figaro giù, Figaro su, Figaro giù. Figaro giù. Figaro su, Figaro giù. Pronto, prontissimo, son come il fulmine, son il factotum della città, della città, della città, della città, della città. Hello, everybody. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I don't cut any stuff out. No, you don't. <laughs> Welcome to the Untitled Trek Show. Hi. Previously, number one science fiction indie podcast on Good Pods. Yeah. Previously. <laughs> Good Pods are doing us well. They yeah. are looking after us. Thanks to our fans leaving great reviews. I say Good Pods aren't really doing the looking after. It's the fans going and, or I say, say listeners rather than fans, listeners going and reviewing and commenting. and That's true, but Good Pods has actually created quite a good idea. Oh, a yeah. A community-based podcast player, a brilliant idea. It's a really good idea, yeah. Just needs a little bit more polish. I, I don't know what the iPhone app's like, but the Android one certainly needs a bit of more work. But they are very good at fixing the things when you tell them. Oh, yeah. I mean, the iPhone one, iPhone? iPhone. <laughs> Sorry, I come from <laughs> somewhere like in his. Europe. iPhone. <laughs> uh, iPhone one has been pretty good. Yeah. Um, it did used to have a few bugs. It was pretty slow. It's a little bit slow now, I would say. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty solid. Just waiting on CarPlay. That's yeah. the big thing I'm waiting on because then I can move to it. Because I listen to so many podcasts in the car. If I don't have CarPlay, I'd have to fiddle around with the phone, which is obviously illegal in the UK. So I can't use it. Yeah, I, if I'm using Spotify, I can press the skip buttons on the radio yeah. and it will skip ahead a certain time. It doesn't work. It's straight out. The, there's no kind of... I don't know what it's like if you're using like your headphones and the buttons on them because I never use them. I only do the double tap pause. That does work. Oh, fair enough. Oh, yeah, but that, that should just, yeah, trigger the phone now. But yeah. Again, we're not going into Android versus iPhone because no, that's just care. that's nothing to do with this podcast. No. Neither of us care. But the one thing that iPhone does do is on the majority of all the music players or podcast players mm -hmm. are forced to use Apple's APIs and stuff for music. So when you go into now playing, it will show you whatever's playing and it will take you to the app that's playing. In effect, it's basically using the same start, well, play, fast forward, rewind buttons. Yeah. And you can bring in a few extras that other apps might not use. So no matter what you're controlling it via, it works. Is it almost just like putting a different skin over Windows in, Media Player? In of? effect, yeah. yeah. I mean, for the programmers out there, you basically download the kind of developer kit yeah. And it's just like, right, well, I'm going to use a music player and Apple provides you all the music player functionality that you just drag and drop and then you code to do what you want. But it's still using their base code, basically. Yeah, that's a really good idea, though. But then, you know, they're that ecosystem. Eco well, it, it, it means that you're stuck within ecosystem. the Apple infra in infrastructure and their ecosystem, whereas Android, I'm pretty sure if you wanted to develop a fully pledged music player on your own for yeah. Android, it, you so. probably could. Yeah. I'm sure Google do provide the ability like Apple do, but if you wanted to ignore that and just do it straight up yourself, you can probably also do that. Yeah. That's just what it is. But anyway, it's we're, we're rambling on Not about... Nothing to do with sci-fi or Star Trek. So, as always, any sci-fi in the last fortnight? 
other than Helldivers 2. Other than Helldivers 2. Dun, which, dun, dun, dun. which is actually sci-fi. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. I've watched another episode of Twisted Metal, mm-hmm. which I'm still really enjoying. Yeah. The level of comedy and action and thriller that they've kind of fit into it works really well. Mm. I'm, I'm genuinely surprised. As I, I put it on thinking... I think this is going to be a bit crap. I can't see how you're going to make Twisted Metal into a TV show. But they've managed it. And I hear that they, uh, they've they also done Fallout Justice. I'm two episodes into Fallout. And it's very good. Well, all I'm seeing is rave reviews for it at the yeah, moment. So that, that's been added to my list to watch after I finish Twisted Metal. Yeah. So I'm going to add that on. But otherwise, exciting news, I finally, after four failed tickets... Have seen Godzilla X Kong. Yeah. Uh, is it the new Empire or something like that? Um, yeah, I finally seen the new one. And loved it. Great. I, you know, I love all the new Godzilla stuff. Since the 2014 first film, and then you've got Godzilla King of the Monsters, then you've got Godzilla vs. Kong, now you've got this one. Love them all. The one that I didn't particularly enjoy, but I will go back and give it another chance because I didn't really watch it properly we were around a friend's house when i was watching it mm-hmm. and we were just chatting more than anything was a uh, kong skull island i don't know if i've watched that i've watched a godzilla film that had millie bobby brown in it yep so that is king of monsters okay so, so that I is the I've second in that. the series i think i've seen that yes the, um they're just i think they're all really good they do godzilla beautifully i mean the styling of the films how it looks the sound everything i i just think is really good and i think the stories are pretty good brian cranston is he in the millie bobby brown one too he's in the first one okay so i've seen that and i've seen the millie bobby brown one. so yeah so Godzilla 2014 is brian cranston's story his yep. wife gets killed um he's trying to uncover what they're really doing at this nuclear accident which turns out to be godzilla he finally dies and it's about his son trying to get home and stop Godzilla, etc. Then you've got King of Monsters, which is, um, yeah, Godzilla versus a handful of other monster uh, titans. Shouldn't you call them monsters? Titans by their title um, start appearing, and Godzilla beats them all down. And that's the Millie Bobby Brown one, and it ends in the football stadium. Again, really good. And is that a sequel? Yes, that's the sequel to the first one. Then the third sequel, I'm guessing, should technically be Skull Island because it's about the discovery of Skull Island. Well, yes, it would be. So it's about the discovery of Skull Island, the discovery of Kong, uh, the discovery of the little deaf girl who's part of the Iwi tribe and she's the last survivor. Then you get to Godzilla vs. Kong. Okay. Which was surprisingly good i don't think i've seen that uh it's got mecha godzilla in it okay. which is a brilliant <laughs> addition no i was not expecting that i was just thinking it's going to be kong versus godzilla big punch up and then mecha godzilla rolls out. It's like, oh that's pretty cool and do they then fight him yeah and then this final one um it's almost the kong equivalent of the new Planet of the Apes films. So there's the whole, without going too de- into, into too much depth and too many spoilers, uh, Hollow Earth is now known about by the entire world. Uh, so it turns out the Earth is hollow and on the inside of the Earth is this pretty much untouched, beautiful land of monsters that man has never set foot in. Uh, how does it get light? Uh, well, I've ne- yeah, Let, let's not even go there. I'm sure it does <laughs> explain it and I can't remember. But... Um, we basically go back there. Kong is there because that's where he lives, uh, cho- who chooses to live. Um, and then, oopsie daisy, some evil big monkeys manage to escape their prison that Godzilla trapped them in. They also discover that the Iwi tribe are actually on the hollow earth, hidden away in kind of plain sight. And then basically Kong has to go and get Godzilla to help him come and beat up the bad monkeys but... and trap them all and, and, and stop them from wanting to come and destroy them. Basically, the whole story is that the bad monkeys were locked away by Godzilla many years ago. They are 
enraged by this because the reason they were trapped away was because they want to take over the surface. The surface. So he just he when you say lock them away, he just closed the hole up. He basically yeah trapped them in a kind of lava filled horrible cave system, and that was it. Right. Um, I'm just trying to think. Of, remember what they said. Basically. Kong is the protector. I think Kong was meant to be the protector of nature and Godzilla was the protector of the overworld. Right. Or vice versa anyway. And um, yeah, either way, I've made it sound really boring. It was but, a lot of information for two monsters fighting. Yeah. Well, it's it's not two monsters fighting, which is really not. And you know what? The whole Godzilla does turns up at the beginning of the film, but doesn't really turn up much until towards the end when we get the big fight scenes, which Godzilla films just always do really well. Mm -hmm. But there is one that actually I might watch with you at some point. I've literally put it on Amazon and it came up on my TikTok. TikTok seems to show me some random things. (laughs) Some of them I really don't want to see. Other ones I really want to see. And it's called Shin Godzilla. Right. And it will be a completely subtitled film, Mm -hmm. but it's a 2016 film of the origin of Godzilla. So this weird mass comes out of the ocean and it shows him evolving through the stages to the Godzilla we know. Right. And it looks really dark and twisted and it looks really well done as well. And mm. for six quid on Amazon, I thought, you know, that's worth a punt. Yeah. What have I done? Helldivers 2, obviously. Uh, Fallout. Yeah. And I've watched some Discovery. Oh, yes. Discovery is back. Discovery is back. And it's good so far. Nice. I know I'm doing it in a funny voice. There's no caveat to that. It's extremely cinematic, that first episode. It's like watching a film. Right. It's just so much action. But you know what? That's kind of what... If you told me... Or asked me, sorry, to say, what did you think the style of Discovery was... Was it? Is it more TV episode? Is it more film? I would say everything I've watched has been more film-like. Yeah. If I was going to take... So let's take Strange New Worlds and take Discovery. Strange New Worlds feels like what Star Trek is. Episodic. Yes. Next gen. That kind of stuff. But just... You know, look back to the beginning almost. Yeah, we're we're going episodic. Yeah. We've got a couple of storylines that are ongoing, but on the most part, each episode yeah. is just a new day in the world. Whereas of the Discovery Enterprise. is very much a streaming service idea of what Star Trek is. Because yeah, Netflix started it, didn't they? Yeah. So at or, first ori- or it was on Netflix. Yeah. They so Paramount it. created it, but it first originated on Netflix mm. because Paramount Plus didn't exist at that point. But you can tell, right? Um, just staring at the machine. I know. Just making sure it is actually recording. It's recording. It the red numbers are going up. Yeah. Sorry. It's just. <laughs> I'm, I'm so used to having it in front of me, and I was looking at it. So I'm sure the screen changes, and no. I can see the red dot now. So yeah. don't worry. Um, wow. It's a really <laughs> feeling full of panic. So yeah, it 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 feel because every episode literally leads the next, leads the next, leads the, and yeah, it does have, you know, episode episode. So it does kind of solidify a story in each one but it's driven by the overall story yeah so each season it's its own dedicated storyline isn't it really whether it's um the initial klingon war that they're going on about Mm. through to like you say with this season and is it the progenitors yes i texted you didn't you did text me yes but it's, it's not ruining it for me because i i Again, maintain, I don't really care about Discovery. It's not that I'm going to say I hate it because that's an unfair thing to say mm. and I need to give it more of a chance, but it's just more I don't really mind knowing spoilers for it. From my perspective of it, it's a shame, in my opinion, it took four seasons to get to what I would call quote-unquote good. Right. I really had to force the third series down me. I had no interest in watching it at all. And my wife was like, let's watch it, please, because she really liked it. Okay. I just stuck with it, and I'm glad I did, because I really think season four is so good. But you know what? It's we, I, We've we said it before. It, it It's turf we've already treaded many, yeah. many times before. Treaded? Tread many times before. Um, and that Trotified. is, Discovery will be 
someone Star Trek. Yeah. Just like Episode 1 Star Wars was someone Star Wars. Mine. Rogue One was someone Star Wars. Uh, it's That is the truth about it, really. Yeah. It might not be made for traditional Trek heads. They may enjoy it. But on the most part, it's been designed for a new market to try and keep the Star Trek name going. Yeah. Um, and in which case, your wife is a prime example. I know she loved Star Trek anyway, or she enjoyed Star Trek, but the fact that she enjoyed all the seasons of it yeah. shows that it was made more towards her than you, and it's taken you that much longer to get into it because of how it has been. That's not a negative. That's just saying different markets exist. Different yeah. people are out there, and you can't just attune one series or one show to one type of person otherwise you, you'll never have any movement you'll never have any new fans or old fans because it'll get sterile it will get boring and see you later and there are a lot of people out there that don't want lower decks to end bastards ensign's log start date 28544.2 maybe i need to find out where the moisture comes from to find out where it goes Engineering still aren't returning my calls. Ensign's log, stardate 29935.6. Working theories where the moisture comes from. A. It's hydrogen collected from space and liquefied through science in the ship. Or B. The replicator makes the water. Still not sure where the moisture goes. In my testing, I was able to spray water pistols uh, through water bombs and buckets of water through the arch. And my clothes stayed wet going through the arch. And they left moisture all up the floor as I left the arch and out of the holodeck. Maintenance weren't entirely happy, but I still think it was a very, very important experiment. And I'm sure the captain would agree. Accessing library computer data. The Next Generation, Season 5, Episode 16, Ethics. 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 So, before we get so crazy into it, did you like it? First of all, it's a pretty dark episode. Yeah. As much as um, Star Trek is dark, I guess, the, the whole idea of it being around a cultural choice... And because of an injury, wanting to die, mm -hmm. mixed with the side story of, I'm a doctor, but by the way, I'm also just testing all of my theories on live patients without real permission. Yeah. Makes it just a little bit darker than most, most Star Trek episodes are of that era. So, I mean, we haven't got to Deep Space Nine yet. Deep Space Nine has some very dark stuff. For TNG... This is probably one of the darker episodes. Yeah. I like it. I liked it. I really enjoy Ethics as an episode. Um, and it goes hand in hand with what I tell people is season five is probably one of the best seasons of The Next Generation. Yeah, when I was going through it, because I couldn't remember what season or episode number it was, but I remembered it was called Ethics. Yeah. So I just literally went to the first episode on, on the Paramount app on the a bowl tv i just made my way through and saw the little pictures of every single one all the way up to then as by the time we got to season four and five like it, they looked really like the graphics of like the pictures look really good and... yeah don't forget though what we're watching there they are, is the girl. remastered yeah. versions so and you can tell because all the it. screens yeah. have been redone the outside the panics have all been redone so you can you... tell in this episode oh yeah yeah there's a couple of moments but we'll get to that so Essentially, just to summarise what happens in this episode, there is an accident and the lightest barrel you've ever seen in the world <laughs> manages to Boing. crush the security man, Worf. Probably the biggest pussy on the fucking Enterprise. <laughs> you can't call Worf a yes, pussy. you can. Yeah, to be fair. He, he, he waves his torpedo around, but as soon as it's a, he hasn't got his torpedo yeah, to hand... It's just a phaser. He just gets beaten up. <laughs> yeah. And so he becomes paralysed, and he, part of their culture, I've written down what it's called, but we'll get there, is that when they're not useful to their family or they can't fight whatever, they have to kill themselves. 
Yes. And it needs to be a family member that does it. So they're not really killing themselves or actually getting a family member to kill them. So, mm. but it's all about him trying to get people to kill him and then another doctor comes on the spaceship and she's like a researcher and she has this newfangled way well she's a a, a new neurospecialist so she yeah, specializes in neurological and neuro based injuries so spinal cord brain injuries stroke you name it those sort of injuries and she wants to fix him we'll get into the rest of it but that's basically the summary of what it is yeah 100 percent so, it has a un- really unfortunate start in that they start talking about fucking poker. Oh, I know. So, first of all, I've got Tro- Troy is crap at bluffing. Well, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Even though she's the one that's basically reading everyone's mind going, he's happy, he's happy, he's happy. That means I've got a good hand. I won't play this hand. And also, as we said Geordie would yeah. be doing, he cheats. Now, yeah, right, okay, look. <laughs> if you've never played poker... You won't understand this. But even if you've played friendly games of poker with your friends, like we have, we had poker yeah. night. We used to love, we've got to have another poker night mm-hmm. at some point. Just not Star Trek based. No. But there is a, I guess you'd call it a gentleman's rule that mm-hmm. if everyone basically checks out and goes, nope, I'm not going to carry on, and you take the hand, you're not expected to show your cards. You do not have to. It's your choice, and if you choose not to, you can be that's asked fine. to. Because yeah, yeah. you can and be you can asked. Still say no. But unless someone matches your um, bet, you've got no need to show, and that's just the gentleman's rule. And it yeah. means that no one can say, "Were you bluffing? Weren't you bluffing?" Exactly. Who knows? Yeah. Yet yeah, there you go, Geordie. Oh, I only peek after the hand is finished. Yeah, it's a really shitty thing to do. And. He blames Worf for not, for not, bringing, ha- not bringing the cards, cards that are uh, susceptible is... to infrared I know. Light. What a jerk. Okay. Well, guess what, Geordie? I've got 52 cards. They're about one metre long now because they're made out of solid titanium. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a knob. It's really shitty. Yeah. Really shitty. Why don't barrel land on him? <laughs> <laughs> <Because> <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> no, he would have brushed it off. Wolf's the person you remember. Oh, don't. And that that is. Oh, God. Oh, no. A light plastic barrel has bounced off Wolf. The thing is, I'm very familiar with that particular kind of barrel. It's basically a water butt. Yeah. They're not heavy. They're designed for shipping. Yeah. So you can put dry goods in them or you can put liquids in them. But they're designed for you just to pack them seal them and send them off to a shipping agent. I understand it's probably full of something because you see it kind of... I think it's acting like it's pressurised with something because when it's all coming out, you can see it disforming with the weight of the one above it. Yeah. So I get what they're going for. It's meant whatever the chemical is that they say, oh, we've got a dangerous leak. We don't know what's going on. But then there's something about watching people pretend that it's heavy when they try and move it away which unsold its heaviness to me yeah it just didn't work with them now we have seen it before i mean um we've seen Riker and co lifting girdles Mm -hmm. off people and on a most on the most part they don't do a bad job at making it look heavy yeah it's when they throw it and it bounces or the polystyrene (laughs) surroundings that fall on them bounce that it gives it away yeah. but in this one it's just so hammed up and overdone it's just yeah it, it didn't work it needed like a sound effect or so it needed something <laughs> Boing. because they weren't <laughs> selling the weight of it the geordie and whoever the other dude was that was no no the, the, there's not and honestly they should have cut it when it hit him yeah not hit him bounces off and then cut. Yeah. That little extra second earlier would have sold it way more. Now, after that bit, we're then in like the the medical bay. Now, at this point in time in technology, they can rebuild hearts. Picard has a fake heart. He has a yep, he has it's, a robotic heart. Now that's complicated. Absolutely. Could they not fix this dude's back? So mm, So 
talking about modern medicine as we are now. So don't forget, artificial hearts exist right now. Mm. There are people that have lived in hospitals, and I've forgotten one of the longest. I think it was over a year, the longest someone survived with just an artificial heart, uh, with no other heart in their chest. Basically, it's a it's a it's a pump, and the tubes led out to a box that circulated the blood, and it had a battery, and they could walk around, do normal day to day activities with this saddle bag on basically and that's an artificial heart so it exists the problem is with the spinal cord is it is a, a bundle of million well thousands of nerves mm. and as kind of beverly and dr russell who we we let, later are introduced to say it's surely the genotropic um thing that russell wants to do is better than just trying to stick nerves back together. And that's exactly where we are at the moment. Sticking so in current yeah. current kind of technology's term, what we have is a very special kind of nerve glue. And that's what... There's a weird Russian scientist and a uh, Russian paralysed man who's dedicated his body and his head to science, saying, as soon as another body comes up, I'm willing to let you do a head transplant. Yeah. On a, uh, it's ridiculous, but basically the idea is is they need they use the world's sharpest knife to sever, sever, sever even the spinal column, and it's got to be the most perfect cut. And then they use this glue to basically stick it back together. And in theory, the glue allows the conductivity between the cut nerves. But that's where we are at the moment. So you think that many time, years in the future, we would have got better at that. Can they keep his head alive? Uh, the, you know what? There's all sorts of things you could say there. Um, yes, you could. And there's videos, for uh, black and white videos from kind of World War Two era of rats' heads being kept alive with blood being pumped to them externally. Because if you think about it, the brain requires oxygen and blood. That is it, really. So as long as the artery in the vein is doing the send and receive, and the blood it's receiving is oxygenated, the brain will stay alive. Mm. Um, it's more the shock of what's happened that's probably going to cause damage and kill it. Mm. So you, you, how would you overcome that? You can't. And uh, coming back to then the future, yeah, you would have thought they may have improved on what we already have but it doesn't seem that they have has it it's no. it's very much we'll just plug some things into you and anyway we'll get to there we're, we're ahead of the game what i didn't like and it's unusual for trek because normally it's much more accepting of things but i've just got beverly really shitty with the customs of klingons at this point because yeah. her words are Oh, he's just grumpy. No, he's not grumpy. He's paralysed and he wants to die because that's his customs of his race. She's You're like just saying, oh, episode. he's grumpy. Yeah. No, he's paralysed and expecting to die shortly because of that's what he need, wants. But even if he <laughs> wasn't a Klingon and was a human... I'd be grumpy too. <laughs> really bad bedside manner, love. Yeah, like, it, it, not it, it really pissed me off that bit. I said, like, no, I, I don't like that at all. And then, of course, then you've got um, the ship's log. Commander Worf has been put on, um, has been taken off active duty. Yeah. So I've got here, well, we've said it before, HR is needed on the Enterprise. Yeah, Disability time. awareness, anyone? Worf's not allowed to work? What, they can't get him an electric wheelchair? Yeah, <laughs> they can't make make changes for him. You know, lower his console so he can still fire torpedoes. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that was so we've had the intro, which looked brilliant, as always. Yeah, and then yeah, Doctor Russell appears. On the yeah. So, um, it's the first meeting of Doctor Russell, isn't it? So that's no. So before Russell agrees uh, arrives, sorry, we've got Riker. So he's called. No, 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 it goes. It goes intro, then Doctor Russell, and then Riker. Sorry, yeah, so yeah, Doctor Russell. Yeah. Now, now, Riker. Yeah, so we're introduced to Doctor Russell, and it's oh, hello, thank you, Brown. I'm the neuro specialist. Blah blah blah. So, why is Doctor Russell there, in your opinion? I think that she's only come there to see Worf. I thought okay, that was the good. point. Remember that because that's exactly what I'm assuming. It makes sense. She's the specialist neuroscientist in health, dedicated 
to neuro injuries. I thought they asked her to come. I thought that was exactly. the point. Fine. Okay. Keep that in mind for after we talk about the next bit with Riker. Okay. So one of the things that, that she says is they haven't done any neurological oh, no, so that, research. That, that, that comes next. That comes after the Riker bit. Oh, I've written that before Riker. Oh. Because I wrote it in order of... Oh, maybe I've happening. got it in the wrong order. Then. And then it says, you know, normally they let the patient die, she says. Is this the bit that they talk about the Klingon anatomy and I've never seen so many redundant systems before? Or backup systems? Or is that after Riker on yours? That's after Riker. Okay, fine. So, yeah. Okay, no, you're right. So, yes. They come in. Beverly says, I've tried to speak to the Klingon health council and whatever. Yeah. And they say, normally we just let the person die. Yeah. Which, again... Bev, you were really shitty earlier. Even the Klingons have said, we just let them die because... That's what you and I said in the last episode. Yeah. Yeah, wasn't it? That they're just, we were talking about the spaceship, <laughs> the Klingons' spaceships. They just let them die. Exactly. And yeah. if you're going to be a doctor serving a multi-race on your ship, surely the Hippocratic Oath, which we discussed in the last episode, yep. should include... The rights and the customs of your patient, of whatever race they are. Mm -hmm. So, if you're not going to follow the Klingon race's wishes, should you be treating them in the first place? And we know it exists there, don't we? We do. Because Riker appears leaning on a piece of equipment with the symbol on it. <laughs> they can't, well, how do you pronounce it? Cadacus? Cadacaeus symbol? Yeah, the uh, Cadesius. Yeah. Symbol, yes, which I have tattooed on my arm. The sword enough. and two snakes, is that what it is? Is it a sword it's and two snakes? It's a staff. Staff and two snakes. Staff, yeah. two snakes, and normally uh, wings. Yeah. So we know that they are still using they, that. <laughs> precisely. If you're going to use that, then you're following in that. So, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you notice how shit that room was? Yeah. To be in for three days. I want to know what the pink and blue gel was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because like that's in every room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every room in Medibay, there's blue gel, pink gel, blue gel, pink gel. It's the same gel you get in the haircut. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's probably in the bloody hairdresser's one, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They didn't have the room. <laughs> so they've just put them in style in St. Albans. The, um, yeah, it's just, uh, well, where's the TV that you put your credit card in? There's nothing in there. No, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. What are you going to do there? You're paralysed, you're laying there. You've got to put, well, Beth being shitty... What else are you going to do? Yeah. Why did, that's going to go over the heads of the Americans that listen to this. In the UK hospitals, no, you can get no. a television and you have to put I'm your sure credit card I'm sure US in. hospitals have that as well. Well, the same kind of thing. I would have thought so. The amount that poor Americans have to pay, they probably don't get televisions. Oh, I bet they do. I've, on a ward, I bet you do. Because then it gets charged to your insurance. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Well, either way, yeah, you're right. There's no entertainment. But saying that, if you were to watch... <laughs> The entirety of the next generation, you yeah. would assume the only entertainment available to them is data playing violin, reading poetry, or Riker on the trombone yeah. in 10 forward. Yeah. That's all it seems to ever be. No one ever goes, no, I'm just going to go back to my quarters. I'm just going to watch something on the uh, view screen and get an early night. Mm. You don't get any of that. Oh, Picard listens to music, sorry, in his quarters. Going to go watch EastEnders. <laughs> yeah. Because that'll still be going, won't it? Yeah, it'll still be as miserable as ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Cat Slater is back for the 300th time. <laughs> yeah, Cat Slater. It's just her head in a jar like in Futurama. <laughs> <laughs> her and Alfie Moon <laughs> <laughs> at the pub. <laughs> uh, the ceremony is called Heck Bar. Ah, the headbutt. <laughs> yeah, Heck Bar. Heck Bar. Heck Bar ceremony. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I actually fully understand Riker's position on this. And I know, I like what they do with this part of the story, with him being challenged about his feelings towards doing it. Yeah. As I don't think anyone should have... If it's not being... It's not being against someone's culture not to do something that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I didn't agree with... Um, oh, what could we say? Um... Oh, uh, what's the type of meat that... Uh, halal. Halal. If I didn't agree with halal meat, and someone said, oh, have a kebab, it's halal, I wouldn't feel bad about saying, I don't agree with halal, so 
I won't have it. Thank you very much for offering, though, but I'm not mm. going to. Now, obviously, I'm not against it. it. Meat is meat. It's delicious. I love a kebab. <laughs> but there is nothing wrong with someone saying, I don't agree with it, yeah. so I'm not going to participate. There's something wrong with you saying, I don't agree with it, and I think you're a horrible person. I wish you would die because of it. That's a completely different thing. Mm. And what we get here is Riker basically saying, I don't agree with your culture here, Worf. I'm your friend. I want you to see I will be sad if you die. I don't think I can do this. It's like he needs to, like, Riker, I think, should be a little bit more understanding to Worf, but then Worf should accept Riker's position on it because Worf knows that Riker is a human and this is not his culture. And from Riker's point of view, he'd be murdering his friend. And you would think Worf would understand that more, being brought up by human parents. Yeah. You'd think he'd understand more about the human culture and the human sensitivities to something like euthanasia. Yep. Um, But he doesn't. He's being stoic and typical blunt Klingon, I guess. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I kind of understand Riker's position on this one. And when later when he's seeing Picard, we'll talk about it when we get there. I'm not sure I I liked that bit much. I was back and forward with who I agreed with throughout the episode, yeah. based on how they spoke about it and how they react to each other. Well, yeah, stories. I mean, just throwing it out there, and I know this is meant to be a fun comedy podcast, but it's okay to have a differing opinion on things. And for example, for me, euthanasia think it should be legalized Mm. um not wanting to get political or anything like that but for me as a person i think if you're compass mentis you're dying of something fairly horrendous and you want to say i want to end it while i'm comfortable and able to do so i don't think that's that's a bad thing i think that should be absolutely allowed i don't agree with people saying oh but if you allow euthanasia then random people are just going to say well i want to die so i'll go and do it No, that's a completely different matter. And that's the story we're getting here, aren't we? Should Worf be entitled to euthanasia based on his culture and what his race would do? Now, absolutely he should, but his form of euthanasia is having somebody else kill him. And that is is not the same. It becomes a very sticky situation, and that's my point. It's okay to have a differing opinion on something especially when you can actually put an argument in place to explain why. And in this case, yes, Worf is entitled to euthanasia. He's not entitled to make someone that's a different race, a completely different culture, to take a dagger and shove it through his heart. I think it's one of those things where his brain is still there, but he's not physically able to do it himself. Uh, uh, Again, I would disagree with that. His arms are working. Well, is that what I mean? He's in... But... By culture, it says he has to have someone else do it yeah. for him. That's the diff- That's the difference. Yeah. Otherwise, it's suicide, and many cultures see suicide, or not even cultures, see suicide as cowardly. Yeah. And we're not even going to get into that one that's because it is bullshit. But you could go down a whole whole discussion point on that, and that's for another day, another whole different thing. That is someone else's podcast. Yeah, exactly. So. We're now looking at Dr. Russell and Troy looking at a really great CGI floating spinal cord. Beverly, you mean? Beverly. What did I say? Troy. Oh, fuck it. But no, you're right. And I get, right. But Sorry, th- I'm really this, horrible about Troy. I just said this fuck is I the didn't bit mean it. Sorry. That really angered me in this episode. And yeah. out of all the episodes, this is the bit that I hated the most with it being written and it existing. Okay? There's parts in the episode I don't like, i.e., I don't like that um, some of the dark side of what Russell is doing, but that's not I don't like the episode. It makes me feel ick because of what she is doing. That's fine. That's a different. I don't like how they wrote this. Mm-hmm. She's there. Oh, I've never seen this before. And they're looking at the diagrams and everything and saying about, look at all the redundant systems and so on it's almost as if it's the first time she's even bothered to look at klingon anatomy it's like yeah you've been called specifically to come and deal with a klingon would you not do pre-reading at this point yeah you'd think they'd know this 
Yeah, How many Klingons? They've had wars with them. Do they not take any of their bodies and just I, well, poke at them a little bit and have a look? Well, no, but you'd think if you've got a Klingon in your service, you should have as much medical knowledge as you are. And it's almost like Russell arrives on the ship with no real knowledge and she's like expecting to be able to walk her through the systems that exist. Now, the uh, redundancy has a name and it is Bracklo. Oh, Bracklo. Bracklo. Every vital function has a built-in redundancy. Now then. Nice. I didn't catch that. I have written down the extra things that they have because she says what they are. Oh, right. Okay. So would you like to play a game? Oh, go on then. <laughs> what would so, you do if I said no? <laughs> Shall we play a game? How many ribs has a Klingon got, TJ? 26. Oh, 27? No, less. just a bit less. Oh, was it? 23. Oh, shit. Why is it an odd number, too? Because, oh, because they, I would imagine they've probably gone with the whole religious aspect that lots of people believe that men have an uneven number of ribs compared to women because of Adam's rib was removed to make a woman. Oh, f- we have the same number of ribs. Then again, though, wasn't he quite... Was he religious, though? Um, Woodenbury? I, I don't know, actually. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I, I'm not going to answer God, that let's one. Let's not because... get into it. We're getting no. into it. How many levers? Two. Yay. How many chambers in his heart? Eight. Yeah, you did remember, so you were yeah, listening. Yeah, there are some things I was paying attention to. And he has a double-lined neuro pia, pia, pia mater. mater. What is that? It's the lining on the outside of the brain. Right. It's double Which lined. basically, so you, you've got the skull, but then you've got various layers of tissue between the fluid that protects your brain and the brain itself. So, for example, you couldn't just get a buzzsaw, cut the top of someone's skull open like you do in films Mm -hmm. and just see brain. That's not true. You'd lift the skull cap off and then you'd have a layer of tissue that you'd have to then cut through and reveal and there's the brain. They do that in Hannibal. He removes the tissue out of there. There we go. So he's he's been double bagged. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. For the rest of us. (laughs) Wolf's brain is double bagged. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, we get lots of Star Trek stuff happens. Loads of Trek talk. It's brilliant. Yeah. Genetronic replicator. Genetronic is a great word. (laughs) Great, great word. Now, (laughs) I would say, she says, oh, in our kind of hollow tests, it's been 37%. I know. It's like, yeah, even that is is a shit off. It reminded me so much of when Kim said, there's like, we'll give it a try with the the transporter. 100%. But... Again, as much as I don't like how Russell goes about things, yeah, she's kind of also right, isn't she? Yeah, it does have to eventually be attempted on a person. Yeah, uh, but I get where do you draw the line? If after let's say one thousand tests, you've still only scored a maximum of thirty-seven percent, do you just say it's just not a? It's just not there. It's just not something that's ever going to work, therefore no. Or do you say there's a fundamental problem with it being the hologram, as in the human body or a humanoid body is always going to be ever so slightly different that a computer cannot replicate, so we have to try it on a real person just to show that actually, yeah, the hologram's right, it failed, we definitely won't try it again. Mm. So you're kind of stuck in that point. It, I kind of get that, yes, she's... Partly or right. she just needs to get out of her own head and and stop being so like fixated on the way she's doing it and look at what am I actually doing wrong? There could just be something that's yeah. not right. But where's why why is there all this urgency about it? I know obviously Wolf wants to kill himself, but they've immediately contacted Starfleet. They've immediately sent out Doctor Russell. But if I was Doctor Russell, I'd say. I'll be there, but I want you to send me over all of Worf's medical logs. I want you to scan his body completely, put him through the transport and bring him back, let's say. That would probably fix it for him. Look, (laughs) we've got the old spinal cord on record. We'll just scan that. Oh, yeah, it's like you with a buffer again, Um, saving everyone's backup. But, yeah, what you would do is you'd send all that data over so then Dr. Ross can say, right, scrub the hologram, uh, the hollow suite stuff we've been doing. We've now got a new test subject data 
and bring that in because all her test subjects she's been doing it on have just been humans. Mm -hmm. Yet she's expecting it to translate to Klingon. Which, why? Why will it? Yeah. There's no guarantee there. Mm. That's like saying, I know how to remove the spleen of a dog, so I'm going to wing it, hoping that it's pretty much the same for a cat. No, the likelihood is, it probably will be. But you still wouldn't risk it. You'd still do the research into it first, before you would say, let's try implementing it. Yeah. There's just... I know it's for the episode. I know they had to do it because you couldn't just say, well, Worf's now paralysed for 10 episodes and then we'll bring Dr. Russell back. I understand that. But it just... It doesn't sit right, does it, that you basically say, eh, we brought them in, they want to try this brand new thing that's never been tested or works, but we've only ever tested it on human... It's, it's just... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was woefully unprepared, wasn't she? Absolutely, one hundred percent woefully unprepared. Mm. Just yeah, didn't turn up with the pre-reading. I'm surprised she even knew what a Klingon was by how she <laughs> fucking is. Yeah, and then we cut to the ready room, and Riker is angry. Ah, uh, no, no, we get the bridge first. Oh, I because they call the, the Beverly to the bridge, Beverly. The, oh, is that where she's leaning against the, the yeah. door frame when uh, the door opens? And Picard basically says, transporter has been hit by a gravimetric oh, yeah. mine That's left it. over yeah. from the Kardashian War. Yeah. <laughs> Those damn Kardashians. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Kardashian. I know I'm ripping the piss. Uh, yeah, from the Kardashian War. How many people are on board? Well, normally it's a crew of 23, I think he says. No, it might be a crew of 26, actually. That might be where I got 26 from. But actually, it had 517 colonists on board as well. Mm -hmm. I'll need all three shuttle bays, and off she goes. And all the civilians that have got medical training must go there. So I've got, yeah, if you've got your first aid at work badge, get to the shuttle bay, please. Can you imagine? St. John in the future must make a mint. Yeah, you're going to be <laughs> every person on the everyone. Enterprise has a little first aid certificate, green certificate with the St. John logo. They've done their one day EFA course. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yes, we Riker says, Can I speak to you in your waiting room? That's it. And he's so shouty. And he's shouty straight away, isn't he? Yeah, he was angry. Yeah, I've got Riker, stop shouting. I know you were angry, but Jesus. Like, I felt it really jarring. Because a few times Star Trek's done that, they'll do jump cuts. And be right in the middle of an argument or something. Oh, okay, right. We're in. We're in the thick of a conversation here that I wasn't quite ready for. Yeah, but this is where I felt uncomfortable. Riker yeah. has explained his position, and Picard's just sat there with a bit of a shit-eater grin on his face, going, "We've got to understand it from Worf's position. Mm. I think you should consider doing it." Well, Picard, why don't you go and stab him then? <laughs> I Jane think Wayward. that. I think I write later on Picard. The way Picard is in this episode, it's odd. He's very, he he's really let making people make the decisions that he wants them to do without telling them to make those decisions. Yes, he's very he's being a manipulative captain a little bit, like really subtly. So he so he plays devil's advocate in every situation that he's in with them, and. With with the doctor later, basically gets her to do exactly what he wants without ever telling her that's what he really wants her to do or that she should do it. Does that make sense? Yeah, one hundred percent. And kind of the same with this one, he does make Riker think again and more about it than just go for the hot headed instantly. No, well we know what Riker's decision is at the end anyway without even watching the episode. But he makes him go back and think about it just by doing a bit of devil's advocate. And I didn't mind Picard in this scene. I was I actually thought. No, he's doing the right thing to kind of get into by Riker. The, yeah, by the end of it, I didn't mind it so much. But the start of it, I just felt really much like you're not listening to Riker at all. You're just saying your friend wants to kill himself. You should go and do it, Will. It's kind yeah. of what I got from he, it. I didn't quite feel it. He basically does say that. But I think it's more like what he's saying is from our perspective, he's just told you he wants you to kill him. But from his perspective, you are his most trusted friend in the entire world and it's very important to him and he's chosen you so don't just so flippantly just disregard it yeah. so aggressively as you have done go back and explain to him 
exactly why you can't do it because it's your culture to not want to do it yeah i felt that's enough. more how picard was trying to play it rather than saying no go back and do it i don't like because picard no, doesn't no. want his security officer to die well, of course he does oh well, i hope he doesn't but then again they might save a few torpedoes <laughs> yeah. it, not every day having to shout a wharf going wharf don't take your finger off the button wharf yeah. don't you know they're civilians <laughs> yeah. uh, no okay you know what You've swung me on that. I kind of understand that. Yeah. But then we're thrown into another really big conversation. That There's so many points in this episode we could spend hours talking about. And as much as I don't like the Alexander character... Mm, I know, I don't either. This is a hard episode for me because I feel for him throughout all of this. Yeah. And it's a really strong point that not many people try and make, which is the child who doesn't care about what the culture is. Yeah. He's young. All he cares about is his dad. Just his mum's already dead. He just wants to his dad and be with his dad and get his dad to be okay. Was his mum human? She was half human, half Klingon. Right, okay. Yeah. Um, and they had angry sex, which made him. <laughs> um, but it's a really kind of... As a parent, it was hard to hear because, you know, we don't have a religion in the household. We, we, we don't follow anything. But I would hate K or T to kind of wake up in the morning and be told, oh, you, your, your dad doesn't want to see you because this thing is stopping you from seeing him based on what they believe. Yeah. It's horrible because as a kid, they just want their parent. Yeah. So it, 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 a really horrible moment, that part. Basically saying, no, you can't, he doesn't want to see you. Yeah, and I think then Troy goes to see Worf, doesn't she? And yes. I think she's a bitch to him. She, I'm never nice to Troy in, the, in this show. I don't know why, but she just, the she's episodes we've chosen, she's one not, of my least favourite characters from there. Nice. But, okay, but you're going, you're doing exactly what I did, though. I didn't like Picard. Because I felt that he was kind of being really harsh against Riker, who was just airing his wishes. Now, you don't like Troy because she's going in and being a bitch to Worf. But realistically, she's trying to get Worf to see from the other point of yeah. view, which is what Picard was doing to Riker. Yeah, that's it. I just think she doesn't go about it in the same way. Well, she no, just she gets in the fact, Andy, she's a bit of a twat. But she but, could have quite, I mean, I am with her, but not how she said it. But knowing. Wharf as a character, that's probably the only way you're going to get through to him, isn't it? Yeah, you can't maybe. have a nice, lovey dovey, long winded conversation about it. He'll just shut off and say, fuck off. Yeah. And now they've got the doctor and um, Russell are there. And they start giving him his options. Oh, yeah. You might this... get 60 to 70% of your movement back. Yeah, and he's not happy with that, is he? I don't want to be the freak. Cling on, lurching the corridors. I think <laughs> that's like brilliant. That, yeah. Yeah. You, I don't blame you. And then obviously, Doctor Russell jumps in and was like, "Let's do this." Oh, Bev's death stare. Oh, she was fucking annoyed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Picard's seen that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was upset. Yeah, but she acted it really well. I've got to say, Beverly as an actress. Mm -hmm is brilliant in, in The Next Generation. How she can kind of conveys her emotion on set. I think she's wonderful. Not so wonderful in the ghost sex episode, but that's a whole <laughs> very special episode. I don't know. I've, there's so many I haven't seen. I've seen so much Star Trek, and there's so much I haven't oh, seen. Oh, yeah. The whole Irish sex ghost episode is very... I think that's season five too. It's a very odd episode. Is it season with a really pale dude? I can't remember. I'll no, be I honest, I can't remember. Too. Anyway, sorry, yeah. So you've got Death's, Death Stare from Bev. Um, and then they go back to the the medical bed and have an argument. Yeah. And they're right in each other's face. They did the they did the close up four by three filmed scene, yeah. right? and I was like, oh, I hope they both had a breath mint because they were <laughs> right. No one does that, and I don't like bureaucracy normally. Yeah. But when it comes to medicine, Bev's kind of kind of right there. Oh, yes, she's bureaucracy right. sucks, but in medicine, med it's there for a fucking reason. 
If she you haven't is, done all the paperwork, all the trials, all the tests, you can't guarantee what you're going to do. Excluding her bedside manner, um, well, not so much like bedside, but the way she talks about Wolf behind his back is actually what I mean. She's actually right the entire episode. Yeah. Out of everybody, she's actually the sane one in the whole thing with the, you know, the correct way of doing it. They just think she's a bit of a knob behind his back, calling him grumpy all the time. Yeah. She's not actually, you know thinking about he might actually be upset you know just you know even the emh learn more about how to handle patients than she does yes break her back and see how grumpy she is and then we get to see what trek is really good at burn victims oh god the makeup that they do for like phaser burns and stuff because it's like a kind it just of triage looks so good aren't they? they're just really good they've done the makeup pit teams and trek always do a really good job and particularly good at they're really good at wounds. Not so much random bits of blood yep. as we I think was it the um the Gillard episode, what was it with the pig men? Oh, Darmok. Darmok, yeah. When there was some blood on and I was like, they just don't put the blood on because it ruined it, if you yeah, remember. Absolutely. Shaka when the walls fell. This one diff completely different. All of the, the makeup looked brilliant, all those people that were over there. Yeah, and then I've got Jesus, she's testing on everyone. Fuck me, she's evil. Yeah, I was calling her Dr. Frankenstein. She's just so matter-of-fact about it. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, did this not work? Oh, he was allergic to that. Oh, so this didn't work. That's unusual. Oh, no, I decided to try something I've been working on. Yeah. Again, it's like Kim saying, well, let's just give it a try, shall we? Yeah. And then it's she... really dark. Yeah, and then she just relieves, doesn't she? Well, yeah, she... she oh, God, yeah. Um... Where am I? Uh, fuck you, Russell. Bev drops the hammer. Yeah. Get out of my shuttle bay and medical. Get out of You're my not pub. Get out of my <laughs> pub, With Russell. Pleasure. You're not performing medicine here anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, so she kind of bans her from doing any medical work on the Enterprise, which as chief medical officer, she's got the right to. Um, and I'm pretty sure she would be stripped of all medical rights i think the, i point. think that point that's Sh- it but surely it's like you deal with the incident and then you'd go and speak to Starfleet and say this is what she's done and the medical council will be like well we need to convene and we need to decide what her punishment's going to be i was wondering if she had some kind of what's the word i'm looking for dispensation is that the word from starfleet to do certain things that normally the other doctors wouldn't be allowed to do just because they called her in she does these kind of research thing she didn't have any remorse for that person dying oh, none at she all. just did her thing and that's what was re- that's what makes this episode so dark yeah is that you've just got this doctor who's willing to go about and just try things and ignoring the fact that it could just result in death just to get some figures and numbers that will benefit her later on yeah it's really horrible, and yeah. it's a re- and it kind of reflects what's happened in the past, I guess. But um, yeah, geez. Uh, but then we're back to medical bay, and Picard turns up. I so I'm going to tell you exactly. I wrote a little paragraph here. Go for it. And I've wrote because I liked this scene, and I wrote this is a really nice side of Picard to see him like this. He's not angry; he's just talking quite calmly. Yeah. And again, he's being devil's advocate. And I wrote, he's being very personal with everybody that he's been with it, the few times he's been in the episode so far. He, and I said, he seems like a really good captain at this point in time. He's giving opinions and not outright ordering anybody to do anything, but he still gets them to make the decision he yeah. wants them to do anyway. I've kind of, what I've written here is, has he really got the right to try and override Beverly, though? I don't think from understanding what other episodes of Trek have done, he can't tell her to do fucking anything. He he can uh, he can captain her and he can tell her what to do, but ultimately, if she decided to turn around and say, you're unfit to be captain medically, she could have him straight off the ship. Yeah. So it's kind of a little bit of A, a little bit of B. I don't think either could cancel each other out mm. without good reason to. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I kind of just felt like yeah, because you're basically saying you know we talk we talked about parenting before. Mm. It's like having two parents, the child coming up and say, "Oh, can we go to the park?" 
no, we can't go to the park today. You've been a little shit bag. Why should we take you to the park? No, that's my final answer. Going and then speaking to the other parent, and the other parent going to be, oh, go on, let's just go to the park show. It completely undermines, undermines the, the other person. And that's exactly what's happening here. Picard's basically saying, you should reconsider. Worf's going to kill himself anyway. Just let Russell do it. No, because that absolutely undermines what Beverly has said, which is, I don't agree with your tactics. I don't agree with how you're going about things. I think you're dangerous. I think your procedure is dangerous. It's untested. But oh, because the captain said so, I'm going to let you give it a try anyway now. Yeah. It undermines Beverly completely. Yeah. And I would expect her to be so much more angry or upset about that. Yeah. Yeah, agreed. I think he does undermine it. It's one of those weird things. It's like you can still kind of see that, well, Worf wants to die. Yeah. Why well, don't we just try this anyway? Because he's quite likely to die anyway. <laughs> yeah. I think that's kind of, that's what Picard's point is, isn't it? Well, there's 37% chance he won't die. But then Beverly goes on about, I will not let him commit suicide. Way to go there, Bev, just proving the point that you don't give a shit about someone's culture. Yeah. I will keep him in a restraining field for weeks, months, or a year if required. Yeah. Again, really shitty behaviour there, Bev. You're not might, that, you're yeah. now putting yourself in a bad light. I think she'd probably get struck off then by doing that. Because now <laughs> she's just keep keeping him prisoner. And you haven't even given him a TV. He's yeah. been there for a year. <laughs> In that awful room. <laughs> <laughs> the pink and blue gel's only fun for all of five minutes. Yeah, we like the smell of it, but it gets boring. And then we've got, right then, Riker goes in, doesn't he? Yeah, so I've got Riker's had a taste of law since Measure of the Man. He's obviously gone and done his research. He's like, mm. well, I did research for Data, I'll do research for Worf. Yeah. But the first thing I've got here, <laughs> if your friends keep dying... Maybe don't be a friend with Riker. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I noticed is he tries to get his attention by throwing his coat on his legs. Well, no, I think that's kind of a ceremonial galb or whatever it's But my be. point is, Wolf paralysed. <laughs> <laughs> What's that going to do? If he doesn't hear it, he's never not felt it. <laughs> oh, just, oh, sorry, I've spilled my coffee on you. That Wolf yeah. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's just, Riker goes on about... How many of our friends have died? Ending mm -hmm. with Tasha Yar. It's like, starting to get an idea, Riker, that you might be bad news for your friends. Yeah. I think he goes a little bit too far because he proper slags off the Klingon culture. Yeah, he really goes for the throat of the culture. Yeah, which is a bit mean. Whilst I agree that it is twattish, the, their culture. Yeah, but it, it's, it's their not culture what and their right race. does Riker and their... have to say that? Precisely. Um... And then, again, it gets darker again when he just suddenly throws out there, well, I've done the reading on a wharf, and it says it has to be your nearest family member that does it. I know. And that's your son. He's just a child. And a Klingon is an adult when they can wield a blade. Shit. <laughs> yeah, and I thought, you're a fucking arsehole for doing that, Riker. Because clearly he, like, maybe, like, Worf was trying... Like Worf knew that already, well knew that already, and he was trying to just not have his son do it. <laughs> exactly, he doesn't want to traumatize his son. But no, Riker's happy with it. What yeah. if Worf had called his bluff? Yeah, precisely. I'll go and get Alexander then. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? No, I want you to go and get him. Yeah, go on then. You you bought the knife, so go and get Alexander now. We'll, we'll finish this. Um, <laughs> I will. I will put this here. After how Riker has been with him. Mm -hmm. And all the slagging off he's done, yeah. I could not see Worf forgiving or ever being a proper friend with Riker after no, this. No, I incident. think it's done their relationship. But more. it doesn't. It doesn't. We know it doesn't. Mm. But re if that was real life, no way it move that's it. ever going to kind of be moved past easily anyway. And then we get Alexander comes in the room. Yeah. And Worf breaks tradition. He breaks tradition. Now, sorry, but I'm just going to say this one. 
Security to medical bay. We have a child with a bladed weapon. Rip, rip, rip. Yeah. Put it down. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Security. We've got one down. Taser deploy. Did you see how he's he... just walking around? Yeah. The he's got the blade pointing up, and he's just running around out into the corridor with this. Like Jesus! <laughs> I noticed that straight away. And it was just like it's like walking or running with scissors. How you meant to hold the end, yeah. like. Do but something with that knife. Riker bought it in, in a pouch. Yeah. Because he pulls it out and you see him pull it from the the, the pouch. He's like, maybe give Alexander And he's holding it like he's holding it, yes. like he's wielding a flaming he's torch. Like, I'm going to go and stab him. someone. Yeah. Ah! Gaiden, I'm coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Troy comes in and Worf's like, I want you to look after my son. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got... So <laughs> Alexander says... Oh, I, I'm re- I'm the fastest at maths, my teacher says. I was waiting for him to say, a good warrior must know maths. Well done, Alexander. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to kind of throw that one in there. And then, yeah, could she not sense what he was about to ask her? Yeah, exactly. She's not very good, is she? <laughs> Shit. I do think it's just all a con. <laughs> She's just like a snake oil merchant. She, she just, she just not reads the it. Starfleet version of Facebook before they come in the room each time. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's see the latest profile update. Oh, oh no. Oh, they lost that promotion. Oh, come in, come in. Now, I'm, I'm sensing you're feeling pretty down at the moment because you oh, I think you lost the promotion. She's a cold reader, isn't she? <laughs> she's a cold That's reader. That's what she is. She's a fucking cold reader. And she's just like, maybe she's just really good in bed. And because Riker just can't get past that. That's she's just got him like, in her You can't touches. get past it, but fuck me, he's nailed a fair few fucking women <laughs> in front of her, hasn't he? Yeah, but she felt that one. Right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just thought he's... Well, I'm glad we're laughing at some point in this. <laughs> we've we've got sense... 48 minutes I've, into this I've and got, we're laughing at last. Can she not sense that coming? Then we've got about Ryan having sex with love. Can she not sense him coming? <laughs> Just laying there. Oh, I started to go to sleep. No, 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 he's doing it again. Oh, dear, I do. What is it when you're linked on a, like a subatomic level but across <laughs> distances? What's that called? Uh, quantum locked. Oh. She's, she's emotionally quantum locked with his orgasms. Oh, <laughs> every night is a nightmare. It's a different person. <laughs> oh my God. What is it? It's like three in the afternoon. What's happening? <laughs> he's meant to be on shift. Isn't he? <laughs> he's on a lunch break. <laughs> yeah. where, where, computer, where's Commander Riker? Commander Riker is in Holodeck 3. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost my Get the mop though. and bucket. Yeah, where were we? Uh, right. Oh, they're in their Willy Wonka suits. So I liked those suits. <laughs> it reminded me of the. They scene... just looked a bit absorbent. Yeah, it looks a bit. Yeah, they didn't look practical for for a surgery. It reminded me of the scene in Willy Wonka where they're all in white and they shrink the person into the television. Yes, but they're in red instead. Oh, sorry, hang on. The one bit I've got before that. So when Troy says, yes, of course, I'll have um, Alexander for you. I've got here. I'd be honoured. And I promise I'll only send him to the Starfleet Orphanarium a month after you die. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the way of TNG. Yeah. Um, uh, right, so yeah. Um, I did love the entire medical scene for this. The spinal column in the box, I think, looked really good. Yeah. Um, the laser scanning for it, all of that. Just, I really like it. Yeah. Um, you got to have a bit of pink goo there, which I'm pretty sure they just stole from Ghostbusters Two. But there is no thought about Worf's comfort. He's face down on a metal grid. He's unconscious at this point. Yeah, but the table hasn't got a hole for his face. Did you yeah. see what he was on? We we couldn't budget for a hole in the table. Right, so my greenhouse, right, is on this plastic square grid and inside the holes of the grid is stone. Stones. Yes. He's on that <laughs> without the stones. If you go back and look at that scene, he's on one of those grids. That will hurt like... His face is just like... It's <laughs> <laughs> flat onto it. <laughs> Starfleet, we don't care about your comfort. We'll just yeah. knock you out and we'll be done. Knock him out and lie him on a bed of spikes. See, what do we, <laughs> what do we care? We're holding him in place. You know, just thought he, he just, yeah, I didn't think that was right. So, yeah, you've got the spinal columns out. They're working on it. Then we go to Alexander and Troy sat outside waiting. And Alexander's, Alexander's playing a Star Trek game, which 
I'm pretty yeah. sure it's just the Seco pyramid talking clock from the 80s. Yeah, it looked like that. I was looking, I think I recognise that. It's a digital clock of some sort, I'm sure it yeah. is. Um, and then we all see we all see Riker and Picard. Yeah. Having just like trying to have boring a boring conversations with each other about yeah. Have you heard anything? Not yet. Yeah. And that was it. It's like, okay. <laughs> well no, they're talking about no, they're, they're talking about the really boring day to day. Which is I'm glad they put it in there because you it does give you the idea that there is day to day activity on the ship that has to be dealt with. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to organise who's taking the trash out on deck thirteen, you know. So yeah, it, it, it yeah, no. Oh, we get the call looking spinal cord again. Yeah, well oh yeah, out comes the long slug that she kind of just <laughs> yeah. plops in. You think wouldn't you beam it in? I know. So you've got like precision, but she's saying it must be fifteen centimeters from the brain stem. Okay? Then do it with the transporter. Don't just bring it out on what looked like two pencils. Flop it in and then just start poking it up and down yeah, until it's I've, the right kind I've of just distance. Got, what is that worm thing? It was just like a really gross looking tapeworm, wasn't it? it just yeah. Like, but put that on your back, mate. Funny enough, your spinal column doesn't look dissimilar. Well, the spinal cord, sorry, not the column. Mm. And then I did. Well, like, that's what it was meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be the spinal cord, and then they generate the spinal column around it mm. with the tissue growth, which, which is the genotronic side, I'm guessing, which did look really cool on the uh, the display. Yeah, seeing it kind of growing in there. Um, but does it work? Well, Woof. she shoves in. So much anaprovalin, whatever the fuck that stuff is. Oh my god, she couldn't get enough of it. 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 75 milligrams. And then, yeah, then it's just like on goes the uh, cortical stimulator, which we first see. I'm pretty sure we don't see it in the original series, but we see it in the Star Trek films when. Uh, is it Chekhov? Yeah, Chekhov falls off the ledge and basically gives himself massive brain damage because they stick the cortical stimulator on him mm. and bring him back to life. It's their version of a defibrillator, basically, but for the brain. Didn't we already watch an episode where they do that? Yeah. We're like, I, what I, the fuck's it doing to him? There's a couple. It's basically a defibrillator for the brain. Yeah. Which is quite a cool idea. But yeah, it's I've, I've got here, it's actually quite graphic Yeah. for Star Trek because, yeah, you see a portion of his back exposed and they're putting things in and it, yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's it's quite graphic but yeah, he died he does die and this bit pained me and i'm sure it's only because now i'm a dad is beverly going out and telling alexander your dad's dead mm. basically that was pretty gut-wrenching i hate that i i can't deal with that anymore i really struggle because it's immediately i put my kids kid. into it and it's just like uh yeah i don't like it um she acted that really well she did mm. the kid did and then demanding no i want to see my dad and they turned him over thank fuck for that he <laughs> hasn't got loads of grill marks all over his face so. <laughs> yeah. don't worry his ridges will go back to normal yeah <laughs> um yeah so they've, they've turned him over and then beverly spots something no well well just before then he like the the guy playing the kid playing Alexander does a really good job, but you can see he was told he's not allowed to touch his makeup. Yes, because he has to put his hands over his face. But you can see he's kind of he's not trying to touch the ridges. Not or anything. To touch the ridges, and then yeah, she sees something, and I had to rewind it because I didn't see what she saw at first. But he kind of does a weird twitch with his head, doesn't he? Yeah, it's kind of a nose, cheek, eye area kind of twitch. Now, was this whole Klingon redundancy thing invented for this episode? Yes. Right. Just specifically for this. I so now they because so. somebody wanted to do this episode, the writers now they've canonized that basically Klingons have Klingons all are these extra bloody rules. time lords. I was gonna say, I wonder if Doctor Who played any part in that idea with the fact yeah. that the Time Lords have got two hearts. Mm. I'd be intrigued. I'd be interested because you know how sci fi lines up and typically sci fi writers will also watch and pay attention to what other sci-fi things have done. Yeah. Um, and now, so they get him to come back alive with some more randomly named drugs. Um, and now we've got. I keep I've called her Troy all the way through all my notes. 
Weird. I don't know why I've done it. So Beverly is now giving her the silent treatment. Yeah, I've got... Are you fucking child? Yeah, I've got silent treatment and I've got, oh, those backup systems. Who could imagine that little bit of information from the beginning would come into play in this episode? And... Um, but quick mm, question. Yeah. Have you ever seen the original Adams Family film? Yes. Okay, so you... Oh, what's the wife's name in it? Morticia. Morticia, yeah. So, in the Adams Family 1 and 2 films, mm-hmm. the way they were filmed was that any time you had Morticia, they had a the mirror light. doing the light across the eyes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they did that kind of 1940s, 30s film style where it was kind of Vaseline around the yeah, outside of it. Up, soften yeah. it up. I swear they do that for Beverly Crusher. In at least in this episode, any time you've got just her face on screen, it's really soft. They absolutely do it in season one. Mm. Absolutely for her and Troy, they both of those two get that treatment. Yeah, um, absolutely they do. And Beverly gets it at this point mm. when it's up close on. They do it to her, and I don't know if it's basically I trying to warm it. you to her. Yeah. Or what? Or kind of make it out kind of the whole good versus evil. So I don't, I honestly don't know. It might just be they're just trying to, yeah, like the good versus, they're trying to harden the other woman up and mm. soften her up. Because I wrote a few, the word I was looking for was smug. That's the word I was about. I couldn't think of that word at the time because I was so annoyed by how Dr. Russell looked. I wrote smarmy twat. <laughs> yeah, no, she is, isn't she? Yeah. She's basically lucked out. Because the Klingon physiology that she had no fucking clue about mm. saved her bacon. Yeah. I said she's a boasting smart ass. Yeah, absolutely. Leaning up against the wall. They're like, we're looking smug. Like, oh, see, I'm so brilliant. My plan worked all along. And I re- fuck off. And I did like, as much as the silent treatment is really childish, I did really like Bev's speech ending with, well, I hope you enjoy your laurels. Yeah. Because you know what? It is cutting. It's just like, you came here and you said you respected my research, my papers, and you were looking forward to working with me. And now you're leaving. And basically, I'm saying to you, I really hope you enjoy what you've come up with and you get from this. Yeah. Not in a good way. No. Um. Yeah. And we get... The final scene is a really good scene with Worf. The physio, yeah. Yeah, and they're like, oh no, let your dad do it on his own. And he's like, no, we'll do this together. Yeah, I, I want my son to help that me. That was it's a warming. really nice, heartwarming end to what is quite a dark, we've not managed to get much comedy out of it episode. No, it, 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 it's not a funny episode. No. It's not one that you can have that much fun with because it's a good episode. But it's a dark episode. I mean, the, I, I'm, again, I'm a sarcastic bastard. You know this. And I've got um, Beverly says, you, it's going to take time, Worf. Don't rush. And I've got, yeah, you've got at least until next episode, Worf. <laughs> yeah, just about. I genuinely want to watch the next episode, see what the star date is, and see if Worf's in it walking around normally. Oh, yeah, we'd have to do that. <laughs> Can you imagine? The star date's literally two days apart and Worf's, basically done. i don't know if they mention star dates in this episode at all because uh, there's only one log and it's a supplementary doctor's log that's true so i and i don't think she mentions a star date so unless it's written on a screen somewhere i think there is a database that says when all the star dates are for episodes that's literally what i'm looking up good old fandom yeah, but it's... Uh, Let's have a look Because I was going to do the same. I was going to write down the star date, but I don't think it ever gets mentioned. In universe date, 45587.32368 in, in brackets. Right. So, we now know 45587.3. Now, if I'm going to open up... What did you say? 445 That's oh, okay. I'll open up in another... I'll open up in another tab, but hang on. If I open this up in another tab and look at what the next episode is. Uh, did, oh, oh, I don't even need that. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. Ethics. 40275. Oh, actually, is that? No, it's not. Oh, that's a production number. Sorry. Ignore me. I was getting grumpy there. Because <laughs> it was a different number. Right. Ethics. 45587.3. 455. Yep. 
eight seven point three. Eight seven point three. The next episode is the Outcast, mm-hmm. and the first date for that is four five six one four point six. Right, everybody who's trying to figure out what star dates are without googling star dates, fucking work that one out. Didn't we kind of work out it was almost like one number is a day? Wasn't I'm not entirely kind of sure. Like we were almost I'm... at that stage. Let's have a look. I'm genuinely I want to know. I want to know kind of No, we're supposed to be working it out based on their shitty understanding of only knowing it from episodes. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, right no right, right no, I've got a calculator. I've got a calculator. Here we go. You got a star date calculator. I have a star date calculator. If we put the star date in, it will tell us the date. Okay, here we go. Oh fuck. No, it's not copying and pasting properly. Come on. Four five five eight seven point three. Right, copy. Here we go. Fuck off, copilot. I don't want you to tell me about the text. I'm fine with it without. Uh, right, okay. Star date. Here we go. Star date. The date is August second, twenty three sixty eight. I don't care about the time. We just care about days at this point. Twenty August second. August second, twenty three sixty eight. Okay. Um. And then the outcast. We'll How do they work this out? There is maths involved. Mm. So Alexander should be able to do this by now. <laughs> Four, five, six, one. <laughs> Whoa. He's the quickest in, in, in his class. Thanks for filling us up with such useless information there. Four, five, six, one, four point six. Point six. Okay. Oh my god! It's been ten days. It's the twelfth of August. It's the twelfth of August. Twenty-three sixty-eight. Okay, I'm so so it takes Worf ten days to get back. Uh, that is if he's actually in the episode. Uh, what's the next episode? Um, Outcast. Outcast, right? Okay, we're just gonna write that down. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna watch that. That's not for the next episode. No, no, I'm just no, gonna no, watch. No, no, we no. can talk about it, but I, I'm not. That's not what we're gonna do next episode. No. That's, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's actually made me. So Riker falls for a member. Oh, what a surprise! Oh, Riker yeah. falls for a member of an androgynous race who lost a couple of their people in an unmapped region of space. Oh God. <laughs> All right, hang on, and I'm going to very randomly scrub, scrubby, scrub, 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 scrub. And, oh, you know what? Wolf might not turn up in this episode. Oh, you've got it there. Yeah, I'm literally scrubbing through the episode now, and it's a very Riker-centric episode. It's Riker and the androgynous female uh, in 10 forward now, blah, 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 blah. Is blah, she no a Delton? Cares. He's basically trying to knob her. She's proving that she's a pilot as well, which is arousing William. Oh, Bev's there treating her, not caring about her culture, no doubt. <laughs> oh, there he is, Wolf playing poker. No, he's fine. He's in he full down, uniform. Though. No, he's in full uniform. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Ten days. There you go. <laughs> Wolf needed ten days to get back into operational order. Screw you, Star Trek. I love you, but God damn it. Ensign Slug, Stardate 3111.1. I've had a great idea to find out where the moisture goes and comes from. Those old scientists, they went back in time to 1986 with the whales. Looks like I'll be spending a few weeks visiting Holodeck San Francisco. Ensign's Log, and do the Stardate automatically. Ooh, could I have just said, Computer, record personal log. No peeps. I've been testing water down in the holodeck. It's... I can't get anything... It's not helpful. Engineering are being just dicks about it. I don't know why. I don't know what I've done to piss them off. Still no definitive answers. I think water might get teleported away. But there'd be, like, comets and stuff behind us if that was... I don't know why engineering won't help me with this. Twat. Command functions are offline. I know we're at the end. Yep. And you're expecting to say what our next Trek thing is, because we've said we're going to do Trek, Trek, 
talk, Trek, Trek, talk. Mm-hmm. I don't want the next episode to be Trek, weirdly. Okay. I know this is a Trek show podcast. I would like you to watch the first episode of The Orville with me. Right, okay. Because when the first episode of Orville came out, mm-hmm. it was around the same time I believe Discovery had arrived. Right. And for me, it was the best non-Trek Trek at the time. And I still genuinely feel that actually The Orville has done Trek better than a lot of Trek of that time still to this day. So my friend Stiddy has seen them all and he would constantly telling me, you know, you love Star Trek, you need to watch this, you need to watch this, you're going to love it. I, and I just, I never watched it and I never was that interested in it because I just thought it was going to be Family Guy in Space. So that's what I was just going to say. So it's Seth MacFarlane. He was a big Star Trek fan mm-hmm. and he wanted to do something different. And whenever I've spoken to anyone, I've said, right, what do you know about the Orville? Oh, it's Seth MacFarlane. So I say, what do you expect it to be? And it's exactly what you've just said there. You've just proven my point beautifully, Mm. which is they always say, well, it's just going to be Family Guy in space, isn't it? And it's not. Right. It is comedy, yes. But so many of the episodes take what Trek has done, run with it, and done it brilliantly. There's an entire part of the Orville where there's um, the security officer of the Orville. Uh, looks a bit like Darmok, funnily enough. Okay. And they live are uh, an all-male species. Mm-hmm. And they partner up. And the male of the species lays the egg. And they have a child. And the child is born. And it's a girl. And you think, well, hang on a moment. We're, we're talking about a comedy. This in, the entire like two part episode we're talking about is about forced gender reassignment, and one parent saying, "I don't agree with this," and the other parent saying, "Well, I do, and I want it to happen." And the Orville having to decide, "Shit, what do we do? Do we follow this person's culture, or do we follow what we think is right?" which no one expected of Seth MacFarlane. Yeah. It gets, some of the storylines are really deep and, and actually straight out of Star Trek. And that's why I genuinely feel Orville, at points, has done Trek better than Trek has done itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's absolutely worth watching. Yes, you do get some Family Guy-style humour in there. You can't avoid that. But overall, it's actually really good sci-fi. So, episode 12 of the Untitled Trek Show shall be season 1, episode 1 of The Orville. Yeah, but you've got to understand... Oh, no, is it episode 12 or episode 13? Episode 13, I believe. I think this is 12. This is 12. This is 12, next one's 13. And it's going to be an episode of The Orville, but I think people need to understand that Trek went on to influence so much. Yeah. I mean, at some point, I want us to look at Galaxy Quest. That's a great movie. It's a brilliant film, and it's straight up lifted piss take off Star Trek. Mm. Um, I did say though, I think it was last week. I did say I want to do sci-fi in general, mainly Trek. Yeah, it, well, it would be nice expand. to do sci-fi that has been influenced by Trek, and it, and this in this case, the Orville fits that perfectly. Yeah. Um, and for those of you that are following along and that want to watch it and don't have access to it on DVD, uh, it is streaming every season on Disney Plus. So sure. if you've got Disney Plus, you can watch The Orville. Uh, otherwise, I'm sorry, I don't know where else it streams, so I can't help you on that one. But yeah, episode one of The Orville. It might not be very Trek, but I think you'll see what I mean. Wicked. Ensign's log. The San Francisco mission with Kirk and Spock and one that's going nowhere. Once you're banned from SeaWorld, it's over. But sod the water. I don't know which of those old scientists programmed this, but holy shit, this is what you're going to want to do. Load the simulation. Observe the mission. Don't sign in as a participant. While they all go on their mission, say you want to explore the time periods, arts and culture. That unlocks the map beyond the mission. Pay close notes and listen to attention. Now, follow these instructions very closely. It's going to be a long time. Head north 
from the landing site for about mm, five minutes. There's someone asleep on a blue towel with a grey backpack. Wait until the lady walking the dog goes past, then steal a bag in their shoes. Walk to the bench, take the wallet out from one of the shoes. When the guy selling the music comes by, offer to swap him the shoes for his jacket and take a cab to Hyde Ashbrook. This is important. Give the cabbie $200. He will drive you anywhere for as long as the mission lasts. Any less than that and he gets called away at an airport run after you leave him waiting for half an hour. Well, also, set a timer to get back to the landing site before the mission ends or the side quest makes the simulation glitch and freeze and you have to just walk all the way back to the landing site to use the arch to get out. And computer... Set this to private. So thanks everybody for listening. Thank you. I didn't say watching this time. Oh yeah, I said boom. Listening. So uh, and when are we going to see them next? When are we going to see them next? In a fortnight. Oh damn it! You're not going to say next week. <laughs> no. Well, no. Technically, well, if you follow both shows, we will see you next week. Yeah. On okay. The Mr. Channel Pedantic, 84 you're right. Variety Show. Yeah. Absolutely. I would really like you to rate us ten. Um whereas here it's a fortnight. Yeah, you'll see the Untitled Trek in two weeks' time. Where can you find us? You can find us on channel eighty four dot co UK, our lovely website. And on there it has all of our socials. Has very rarely nowadays posts. We just we need to will get, get back into it. We are going to get back into that. It's just uh, finding a rhythm because we've done so much podcast stuff and so much extra things, haven't we? Yeah, it's been a very very busy past six months, I would say. Yeah, where we've changed up our game. We've introduced now weekly recording. Yeah, as when we first set up the page, we were only doing it every two weeks. So we had time. Yeah, time to write stuff. Yeah, whereas now the stuff we're writing are podcast. It things. basically ends up in the podcast. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's hard to find a median that we can sit on. But we will, and yeah. there will be posts going up again. Yeah. We'd really love you guys to join us on Discord. We've got Trek areas. We've got normal chat areas. We've got film areas, TV show areas. Um, you know, we just opened up a an arty crafty bit if you didn't know it's oh, for flower yeah you if know, anyone that does their own 3d printing or their own craft anything stuff at chuck all, it in there chuck it in there everyone's super friendly um and you can get there by going to channel 84 to uk for slash discord is that That's right the and wrong. That well done immediately accept you to the you know the invite link um email us you can email tj at tj at channel 84 to uk Correct. Or myself, Rob, at channel 84 uk or podcasts, plural. plural, at channel 84 uk and that will go to both of us. See, the funny thing is, it now makes sense that that's plural, because we have the answer to yeah, track channel does, 8 yeah. variety show. It wasn't anything to do with me <laughs> fucking up in the early days and making it plural. Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow the Trek show on Twitter, it's at underscore untitled Trek. Um, that's me that manages it, but we both see it. And the same with the right show at underscore channel 84. That's it's, the one. You manage that, but we both see it. Correct. I think that's everything. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, all the other stuff that I don't check. We do check. <laughs> Rob might not, but we do check. I do check. I just like saying that. I just don't look at them. And um, if you fancy supporting the running of the show, you don't have to. We don't expect it. But if you do have a few nuggets in your pocket spare, feel free to jump over to Kofi, where you can find the Channel 84 Variety Show, which is both shows. We're just not going to open two separate Kofis. No. It's just too messy. Uh, and that money really does just go towards the running of the show. It doesn't go in our pockets. It goes towards new equipment. It goes towards our Google Mail account. It goes towards the web page hosting. Um, we're saving up for a new kind of podcast recorder, although we love the Zoom that we've got at the moment. We'd quite like to get the podcast a Pro 2 from Rode because mm -hmm. then we can plug phones in and have actual phone conversations with people easily. Yeah. Um, so that's what that money goes towards. So if you do have the inclination, which you don't have to, we don't expect it, to donate, chuck it over there and we'll even add you to then the special discord page that gets 
monthly meetings with me and Rob where we just chat about stuff and you get to just chat with us. We have got some stuff coming up. We haven't organised a date yet. We've got that Starship... Ooh, Starship sim- Simulator. Simulator yes. we're going to play together, aren't we? We're going to stream it together. So that's going to be cool. That is going to be very cool. But we'll keep you posted. There'll be another reason to follow on Twitter. or Every announcement gets put on Discord. And we do announce stuff on Twitter as well. But, you know, do one one or both if you want to find out when these things are. Did you just tell our, our, our audience to do one? <laughs> well, I mean, you could clip that and yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Hey, Editor Rob here. Didn't know at the time of recording what I was going to do with the edits, so I don't have a live thank you, but a massive thank you to Adam Court for all of those crew log entries for Ensign Court. They, I think they're absolutely brilliant. He gets me, (laughs) and he gets the, the shit show. Definitely understood the memo. Got the email, he knew what he was doing. Um... Go over to Twitter, at Mr Court. Give him some love. I think they're brilliant. Thank you very much, mate. Hope you enjoyed this show. Bye-bye. I I can't do these things. Why am I whispering? There's no one here. Uh, I've got to leave this in. It's my MO. (laughs) Bye. Thank you for listening to the Channel 84 Untitled Trek Show. This station is now shutting down and will be back in two weeks. Excelsior. Ensign's log. Uh, Investigating where the moisture goes in the holodeck has officially been reassigned to engineering. All future log entries to be approved by the captain. End log.